Good morning, students. Today, in continuation with the lesson Weathering Soil Formation, we continue with the next part, and that is types of weathering. Types of weathering includes physical weathering, chemical weathering, and biological weathering. Now, let us learn in detail about what is physical weathering. So physical weathering is the mechanical disintegration or breaking down of the rocks without any change in their chemical composition. It mainly takes place due to atmospheric conditions such as heat, water, ice and pressure. Temperature variation is one of the main constituent of breaking down of rocks. Now in the plateau regions or in the desert, the daily range of temperature is very high. That is, during the daytime, the temperature can be soaringly high, while during the night, the temperature can drop below zero degree. Now in such conditions, the rocks get heated up during the day and so they expand. At night, when the temperature drops, the rocks cool down and contract. Now this process of alternate expansion and contraction weakens the outer surface of the rocks. And ultimately they break down into grains, which is known as granular disintegration. Some rocks are, however, not very good conductors of heat. In such rocks, the outer layers expand and contract more than the inner layers. This results in the peeling off of the outer layer of the rock in concentric layers, just like the peeling of an onion. And this process is known as exfoliation. Elsewhere we find in very cold regions, rocks break down due to frost action. Here we can see how the cracks in the rocks are filled with water. But because these areas are in very cold places so the water which has got accumulated turns into ice. Once it turns into ice it begins to put a lot of pressure on the sides of the rocks and this results in the breaking of the rocks in blocks. So we can see over here how the rocks are breaking down in blocks. And this we call as frost action resulting in block disintegration. Here also you can see how this small crack is filled with water which gets frozen and ice leads to the breaking up of the rocks into smaller pieces. Such kind of breaking of rocks normally occur in very cold countries and also in higher altitude region. In countries with temperate climate, frost action can be very useful for crop cultivation. During winter, the moisture in the ploughed soil freezes. When it thaws in spring, thaws means when it melts in spring, the soil is broken into fine grains which makes 
farming very easy. Next we come to chemical weathering. Now some rocks disintegrate when they come in contact with water or atmospheric gases. The minerals in the rocks undergo change in their chem chemical compositions and appearance and also become weak. A weak rock automatically breaks into smaller fragments and leads to the occurrence of soil. Chemical weathering can be of four types. Oxidation, carbonation, solution and hydration. Here it's written reduction. It is another way of understanding hydration. Now let us learn how carbonation leads to the breaking up of the rocks. Now when rain water reacts with carbon dioxide, it forms a weak carbonic acid. And when it falls on the surface of the earth, especially on limestone regions. These areas are limestone regions. So areas like limestone, marble, chalk, all these areas get highly affected by carbonic water. So when this type of water that is water charged with carbon, which is known as carbonic acid, when they fall in land, which is having limestone, marble, chalk in great amount, the process of formation of sinkholes, rock cavities and stalactites occur. This normally occurs because carbonic acid reacts very easily with calcium carbonate which is present in these areas especially where limestone is in abundance. So they dissolve the limestone areas and form different types of rock structures underneath the surface. Certain minerals present in the rocks, particularly iron, react with oxygen in the air and rainwater. The chemical reaction forms rust on the rocks changing their color into reddish brown and ultimately the rocks break and form reddish soil which is rich in iron. Now hydration occurs when hydrogen present in water and air reacts with rocks and dissolve them. And this process is known as hydration. The change of feldspar into kaolin is an example of hydration. Now when hydration occurs, it leads to the absorption of water by the rocks which ultimately leads to the expansion of the rocks and the rocks break into smaller particles, eventually breaking to form soil. Here we can see how the continuous flow of water in this stream is being absorbed by the rocks which are found around the stream, which will ultimately lead to 
the absorption of the water and they will break into smaller and smaller pieces. Now sometimes when rainwater dissolves certain soluble minerals present in the rocks such as rock salt or gypsum they weaken and finally break the area which is having these types of rocks especially rock salt gypsum and this process is known as solution so here we can see how this entire area has been eaten up or dissolved by the water which must have got accumulated because of a rainfall. Here also we can see a huge hole has been formed and this is mainly due to the rainwater which has dissolved this entire area. Apart from physical and chemical weathering, biological weathering also leads to the breaking of rocks and ultimately turning the rocks into soil. Biological weathering is brought about by plant roots, burrowing animals and even human activities. So here we can see how the roots of the trees as it grows in size they cause cracks in the rocks and ultimately break it into smaller pieces. The cracks gradually widen and break into smaller and smaller pieces giving way to the formation of soil. Burrowing animals, shells, all lead to the scraping and breaking of rocks. Here we can see how these animals which live in burrows or holes under the ground are responsible in the breaking up of the rocks under the surface of the earth. In this picture we can see how the piddock shells bore into rocks for protection either by scraping away the grains or secreting acid to dissolve the rock. Ultimately this entire rock will break into still smaller pieces and will eventually form soil. Human beings are also responsible for breaking down of rocks and disturbing the rock strata. Human beings carry on with different types of work like mining, quarrying, deforestation, construction of roads, bridges, farming. All these activities together lead to the weathering of the rocks. So we now have learned how all these types of weathering are responsible for ultimately turning the rocks into soil. So that is what we have enough time for today. Thank you.